So I got the complete uh, diagnostics cartridge and test harness for the Commodore 64 and you might have seen me using it a couple of times and I even have a video where I built it and this is the same but for um, the WIC-20. And uh, of course I got this too from uh, Sven Petersen, great stuff consists of a couple of um, PCBs and uh, some wires and uh, some uh, connectors and of course the diagnostics test cartridge software is on the ROM so I'm gonna start by soldering uh, this uh, board and then uh, connecting uh, the different uh, cables so there isn't an awful lot of components on these uh, PCBs. On this one that goes into the U support, there's just a few uh, resistors and uh, the contacts. And on this one that goes into the cassette port, there's a transistor and a couple of LEDs and a couple of resistors. So I'm just gonna quickly solder uh, up this board and then continue with the cables. So that was the soldering uh, and the PCBs done and now I'm gonna continue with uh, the different cables and uh, all the information you need to build this is of course in the documentation on uh, Sven Petersen's github page so uh, look there. For example now I'm gonna build this uh, IEC cable and um, I just printed uh, from the documentation so that I'm pretty sure I'm doing everything correctly. 
soldering these uh, DIN connectors is always a pain so yeah you need to have at least uh, three hands and you need to be quick so that you don't uh, melt the plastic around the pins All right, I think that went well. There's actually one extra wire on this cable that's not in use, so you can just cut it off. And it's the black one on this. Then it's the cable that goes uh, from uh, the user port to uh, the joystick port uh, and uh, for this we use this uh, ribbon cable here and just uh, press it onto the contact. Uh, same goes for the DB9 connector, just uh, push it in and press it on. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do that now. Not really sure if you can see it, but uh, there's a little mark, a triangle uh, on one side of the contact, and that is pin one. And we insert the flat cable from this side, and uh, let's say that the black uh, is pin one. Then just make sure that the metal spikes are uh, gripping uh, correctly and that the cable is straight. Just press it with your fingers and then find something stronger to press down with. So I use this uh, small vise that I got and just uh, turn it until uh, both parts of the contact are completely pushed together. Oops, I think something was not correctly there. And for the other contact, the DB9 connector, we just do the same and we know that the, the black is pin 1 and should also be pin 1 on this contact, which is the first one in the corner. And yeah, so this way down is then the correct direction. The DB9 connector, of course, only have nine pins, so we just remove uh, the last one it's not in use then insert uh, the cable again and see to it that it is properly aligned with uh, the different pins And the same goes for the connector between the U-support PCB and the cassette PCB, which I already got here. And uh, yeah, now it's just a matter of uh, doing a little test on these cables, see if they uh, work, that they have a conductivity between uh, the different pins. Finally, there's a little uh, wire that's gonna go from this uh, little keyboard dongle and. Uh, just solder it in uh, without anything else just uh, yeah put it down like this and then i just make a little knot so that it is a little bit more uh, secured And the other end goes into this little hole here where it says restore keyboard PCB. All 
Alrighty, I think that's it. Uh, the test harness is completed. I have tested all the connections and they are good. So it's just a matter of uh, putting everything together and test it, I guess. And also I need uh, some housing for uh, these uh, PCBs. All right, so I realized I did a little mistake. This uh, contact here is supposed to be standing upright like this to go through the 3D printed case. Uh, I didn't uh, see that before now, so I just need to straighten uh, the pins and put it back right. Inserting the test harness to test, does the test harness test okay? <laughs> so here's the hyper expander with the diagnostics test and then we have uh, just a video output and the IC plug uh, goes to the user port PCB and then the cassette port is connected and I did not uh, attach the keyboard dongle. I I know the keyboard is working, I don't want to open this, this machine uh, now. So let's see what happens uh, now. Alright. Testing. Okay, 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 okay. Sound test. So this looks uh, very promising. Every test is uh, okay. Nice. So it just uh, repeats itself. All right, so I think the conclusion is that this machine works 100% now and uh, the diagnostics test harness also works as expected. Uh, so uh, I'll call this a success. The 3D prints came out uh, really smooth, black shiny plastics and uh, I found a couple of screws, not the perfect screws, but they uh, fit and hold so uh, that's the main point and even black screws for style <laughs> this transistor i didn't uh, put it uh, down in through the board so it's uh, standing a little tall and it's too tall for uh, for the case. No, maybe it's... Okay, no, it's too tall. Need to fix that. And I'm also printed the, the labels, so I'm gonna cut those out and... Uh, yeah, glue onto the case. So I just spent the transistor a little bit back, but uh, actually it's the LEDs that are a little bit too low, so I should have... Uh, paid more attention to the drawing and then put them higher but it's too late now so I'm just gonna well I could uh, find uh, another uh, LEDs but uh, I think it's okay then some glue onto the plastic since I don't have uh, like this um, label sheets that you can print on That's good. The test harness is completed and uh, looking very nice. And uh, just one more thing uh, before I finish off this video, I'm gonna just add this case to the cartridge and uh, I cut a hole here already for, um, 
for the reset button. So that was it for uh, the Hyper Expander and the diagnostics uh, harness. I hooked up my uh, SD to IEC and uh, let's see if we can uh, run some games or demos or something. Nice to have a lot of uh, memory on this machine. So I'm gonna load something now. Uh, first uh, file browser for the SD to IEC. Then I have a folder called WIC20 here. So uh, let's uh, try this uh, bouncing ball demo, I think. All right, <laughs> nice. Wickman, use these keys. <laughs> of course, it's a Pac Man clone. <laughs> Not a very good one. A little bit slow. Yeah, it's uh, probably written in basic. <laughs> So let's try these asteroids. Okay, so this is actually using the joystick. No sound. Well, it's uh, working fairly okay. All right, that was it for uh, this video. Uh, great machine, works uh, just fine. And uh, yeah, really fun to build uh, such uh, things like this uh, uh, diagnostics harness and uh, cartridge. And a big thank you to all of you uh, that actually make these things for the old machines so that we can play with it. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you want to see more, please subscribe and uh, also hit the like button. Uh, it actually matters for us uh, YouTubers uh, that we get uh, as much likes as possible uh, yeah and i also want to thank uh, my patreons for uh, their support so uh, yeah thanks bye bye